Here you are. Thank you, sir. I'll put the steaks on whenever you're ready. Um, fine. Why don't we just sit and talk for a while, okay? Terrific. I still can't even believe that you're really here, Bobby. Well, you better believe it, because here I am. <laughs> you know what's funny? Tonight is like a... It's like a double celebration, in a way. Huh? Yeah, sure. I mean, here you are graduating the top of your nursing class, and here I am with you over for dinner. You are now officially welcome to the DeLuca Mansion. Thank you, boy. How long have you lived here? Um, almost two years. Just after I moved out of the family place on Taylor Street. I remember Taylor Street. It's right across the bay from Elm Street, where I grew up. Yep, that's it. Cut up from Elm Street, too. Although the people over there were still pretty poor. Hmm. Yeah, but it's funny, you don't... I never really thought about it being poor. We might not have had steaks on the table every night, but there was always a nice meal. Clothes weren't the best in the world, but they were always nice and pressed, and my mother kept them clean. Luke and I knew exactly how poor we were. We couldn't wait to get out of that tenement and away from the smell of disinfectant in the hallways. Bobby, what did you do after high school? Why are you always so curious about that? Because I happen to care about you a great deal, and I want to know as much as I can. Well, they were very unhappy years, and I would really rather not talk about them. I have already told you that. Bobby, look, I care for you a great deal. And I want to know everything that there is to know about you. We made a pact, remember? I'm not going to ask you about your work, and you don't ask me about my past. Yeah, I know that we made a pact, but it's, it's just that I care a lot, that's all. Well, it's out of bounds. Why don't you show me the rest of your apartment now? <laughs> you can see it all from right where you are. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Over there we have the uh, Leonardo da Vinci kitchen. <laughs> we have a macrame door, we have a painting, <laughs> we have a lamp, a chair, and tic-tac-toe. And that's it? And that's it. Where's the bedroom? You're in it. See, that's what's nice about having a studio apartment. Why? Well, where do you sleep? Sometimes on the sink or I sleep <laughs> over here. On the couch? Yeah, well, you see, that's what's nice. It's not really a couch. It's a convertible sofa. And do you know what this convertible sofa does? What? It turns into the nicest coziest double bed you ever saw in your life. Diana, can I do anything to help you? I just saw Gail leave a few minutes ago. No, that's all right. It, uh, she and Lee were invited over to the Webbers tonight, and I just insisted that they go. Have you heard anything from Jeff? Yeah, Joe just called from Canada a few minutes ago. Did they find that for Cal Jameson? Well, it turned out that um, the sister-in-law was no help at all. They went to get the police and then came back with a search warrant. Joe feels that Jameson was there the whole time, and he managed to escape somehow when they went to get the police. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Oh, I know. Heather's just going to be crushed. Well, Jeff tried to call her, but there was no answer there. No, well, she's not at home. It's a very long story, but she isn't there. Diana? Peter. Hey, thank you very much, Anne. Oh, Peter. Honey, what are you doing here? I thought you'd gone home hours ago. Well, I did, but I, I just really had an awful time since I... Well, what happened? When I got home, Heather and PJ were gone. I went to the park, and I, I panicked. I know I shouldn't have, but I did. All right, all right. Just tell me what happened. The park was empty. The only thing I found was PJ's little boat and the stroller. It was hidden halfway in the bushes. What? Yeah, yeah, well, I was terrified, naturally. I went back home, and I looked everywhere for a note. And then I called Heather, but there was no answer. I didn't know what to do. I, I came back here to the hospital, but you were with a patient. Well, well, where, where's PJ? Did you call the police? No, thank goodness. He's fine. He's fine. He's with Mrs. Grant over at the Webbers. Heather had an important errand to run, so she left him over there, and he's sound asleep in the den. Well, why didn't Heather leave you a note? Well, Mrs. Grant said she must have, but I couldn't find one. All right, then, if you knew that P.J. was at the Webbers, then why didn't you go over there, pick him up, and take him home? Because I... 
I just wanted to wait here with you. Uh, honey, I, I can't leave for an hour yet. I've, I've got some paperwork I've got to finish up so that Kay can get it out in the morning before she leaves for vacation. Look, why don't you go home now and I'll see you both later, huh? Peter, wouldn't it be all right if I just stayed here? Just, just wait until you're finished. I'd like to kind of sit down and relax and, and not really think about anything for a while. Please, I, I know PJ's okay. Heather will bring him back to the house. I, and I know she won't mind taking care of him. Jeff's still in Canada. Are you sure you're just not making up excuses because you don't want to go home alone? Honey, you've reached a point where you're afraid of everything, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm being followed every step I take. I'm afraid every time that phone rings. I'm afraid of everything, Peter. I'm afraid that someone's just waiting and watching to take PJ from us. It's just an awful thing to live in this fear, just constantly. <laughs> Excuse me, I just saw your fun, but I think it's what? time for PJ uh, to have his dinner. Oh, oh yeah. Go have dinner. Well, would you like to get some? Hey, to eat? yes. Right now, you need everything any else says, yes. okay? If we're exhausted, no kitchen this way. Well, you, you don't have to worry about that. that. We'll, we'll go through the, the dining, dining room. room. No, by eating up a storm, you know Matt and Ryan are out there eating everything in sight. I hope there's something left for when Gail and Lee get here. <laughs> I'll see to it. Okay. I'll get it. Oh, hi. Oh, 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 she didn't know where P.J. was. Oh. P.J. has been here for quite a while. Yes, <laughs> I know. Well, I finally persuaded her to call Mrs. Graham, and she was greatly relieved to find out he was here. Oh, boy. Well, he's here, and they're having a good time. In yes. fact, uh, if we want to eat, I think we better get outside, because Spence's two boys have been eating everything in sight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Lead the way. Out here? Yeah. Aren't you? Oh, Scotty, finishing the top of his class after everything that he's been yes, through. Yes, of course I am. You know, as far as Scotty's concerned, I think this graduating from law school was just another hurdle he had to get over so that he could marry Laura as soon as possible. Oh, I'm sure it was. That's all they talk about or think about anymore. But let's not tell them about their honeymoon until we've eaten and the boys are in bed. How's that? Fine. Okay. Oh, Mom. Honey, I have been worried sick. Oh, honey, you look, awful. you look like you've been through the wars. Well, I feel like I have, too. What happened? Did Jeff talk to Cal Jameson? No, I was able to prevent that. Oh, thank heavens. But Jameson kept me hostage at gunpoint. What? Shh. Where is everybody, anyway? They're out at the barbecue. What do you mean he kept you at gunpoint? Well, I had to pose as his wife at the airport and on the plane coming back here, too. Do you mean to tell me that you brought Cal Jameson back to Port Charles? No, the plane was headed for New York and he stayed on. I was just so scared that Jeff and Kelly were going to catch that plane back. Well, thank heavens they didn't. And, oh, honey, Donna Taylor has called here and she is worried sick. I mean, she didn't find you at the house, she went over the park, and of course she didn't find you there either. Now, why didn't you leave that poor woman a note? Well, I was too upset to think about anything. I'll get PJ back to the Taylors now and come up with some kind of an excuse. Yeah. Well, you better come up with a good excuse for Jeff, too, in case he hears about it and wonders where you were this afternoon. Oh, I, I know. Jeff's birthday is coming up. I'll say that I took the afternoon off to arrange some kind of a surprise present for him, but I've got to get PJ back right now, so where is he? Oh, my gosh. He's in the kitchen. I was just giving him his dinner. I'm just sorry this was another dead end for you, Jeff. Don't worry about it, Joe. I'm getting used to it. It's like that day down at the pier I told you about. Yeah, tell me about that again. Well, Jameson and I had made these elaborate plans to meet down at the pier. I was going to give him the money, and he was going to tell me where Stephen Lars was. Now, I made sure the cops were nowhere around at the time. But when I got there, Jameson was frantic. He was sure he was walking into some kind of a trap. Pulled a gun on me and he ran away, even after I showed him the money. No, that's not logical. I'm telling you, Joe, the hardest part about this is going to be telling Heather now. I'm glad she wasn't home when I called. 
I want to tell her in person. You really love your wife, don't you? Yeah, I do. A lot. You guys childhood sweethearts? No. Nothing like that at all. As a matter of fact, we had uh, some pretty rough times before we finally got together. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Uh, were you and Heather separated that she was in New York alone with the baby? Uh, Jill, that's part of my life that I'm not, not too proud of. See, Heather and I were not married when Stephen Lars was born. And that's what I meant by the uh, rough times. And when I finally realized that I should be helping Heather with the son, and I went to New York, Heather's landlady told me that Stephen Lars had died of pneumonia while Heather was sick herself. And that's what Heather and I both believed right up until uh, Jameson started calling me. When did you and Heather finally get married? It was quite a while after she came back to Port Charles. And everything was just going great for us until around Christmas when she had the miscarriage. Oh, it must have been a heck of a shock for both of you, huh? Yeah, it was, especially for Heather. She always felt that losing Stephen Lars was her fault. And she promised me another son. And now that she knows that she can't have another child, she blames everything on herself. That's why, Joe, that's why finding Stephen Lars now is so important to me. Was, uh, was Heather's pregnancy unusual? I mean, uh, was there any signs that there were going to be a miscarriage? I don't... Mm. No. No, that was pretty strange, too. Heather was in perfect health, and the miscarriage just didn't make any sense at the time. You know, and it, it happened the same day that, that I was supposed to meet Jameson at the pier. Uh, Heather still hasn't gotten over that. And here I am flying home with more disappointing news. She sure is crazy about that Taylor baby, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she sure is. You know, I, I don't know how she would have gotten through all this if she hadn't had PJ to take care of. fun in the backyard, but suddenly I said to myself, if I can't be alone with Scotty somewhere so that he can hold me, I'll just die. That's fine with me. Oh, Scotty. Sometimes when we're with other people, I can't wait for them to get lost so that I can have you all to myself. Hold you. Kiss you. Tell you how much I love you. Do you know how much I love you? How much do you love me? Don't you just love my ideas for redecorating the apartment? What? Uh, the apartment? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, uh, well, I'm having trouble <laughs> visualizing that right now, but if you love it, I'll love it. Oh, when we get back from the lodge, you know, I'm going to have to get busy with some paints and some fabrics, and I've told all my friends that we want plants and things that'll go with white wicker furniture. Just think, Scotty, we're going to turn our whole apartment into a garden. No, no, a park. Our own private park where we can just shut out the whole world and be together. Uh, <clears throat> if you all can uh, tear yourselves apart long enough, the stakes are just about ready. Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I, uh, well, it's been such a long time since you got married. Your mother, I guess, I guess you've forgotten how frustrating it is to be close to the person you love and and still not nearly as close enough. Come on. And so Mom will look after him at the Weber's until I pick him up again. I knew you wouldn't mind, and I tried calling you at the hospital. But when I couldn't get through, I left this note instead. Love, Heather. Hello, Peter and Diana. Heather. Heather. I've never been so happy to see anybody in my whole life. Diana, I'm sorry if I did anything to upset. 
upset you. No, no, it was my own fault. I, I shouldn't have panicked the way I did when I didn't know where PJ was. Why didn't you leave a note like you always do when you change your plans? I did. Where? Right there. I... I didn't even see it. Diana, it was right there when I, I brought PJ back. I looked everywhere. Jeff's birthday is coming up, and I had something very special picked out for him. So I wanted to act on it right away before it was too late. It's all right. It's all my fault. Don't apologize. Excuse me. I, I just want to lie down for a little bit. He told me. Oh, Peter, I'm so sorry. No, no. Diana was right just now. It's not your fault, Heather. But I, I've never seen her so depressed and unhappy. I know. I, I'm just afraid that she might be getting a crack under the strain. By the way, I was sorry to hear that Jeff and Kelly didn't get to see Jameson today. What? You didn't know? No, I haven't heard anything all day. Oh, Peter, I was praying so hard that it would all work out. Well, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Ann told Diana and me at the hospital today. I, I, I thought Jeff had tried to reach you. I'll, I'll never see my little boy again. I know it. Heather, now, come on. You mustn't give up hope. No, he's gone. He's gone forever now. No, no. Now, Jeff is not going to give up on this. And with Kelly working on it, you're sure to find him. Peter, I I'm sorry that I got so upset. I, uh, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to go home now. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, tell Diana I hope she feels better. All right, I will. Oh, uh, Heather, if you've got a minute, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Sure, what is it? Well, I I'd like Diana to get away for a little while. I, I think the change would do her good, but I, I can't leave my practice. And Well, I'm going to suggest that she visit her mother and, and her sister down in Florida. I think that would be good for Diana. Well, my only problem is PJ. My schedule is so changeable, and, well, I don't think I can take care of him properly, so if it's not too much of an imposition... Well, I, I wonder if he could stay with you and Jeff while Diana's away. That is, if I can convince her to leave. Oh, Peter, it wouldn't be any imposition at all. We'd be happy to keep PJ for as long as Diana has to be away. Hey, thank you very much. You know, Diana said it so many times, but I think it bears repeating. I don't know what she'd do without a friend like you. Well, look, I, I'm going to see how she is now, so uh, my best to Jeff, huh? I will, Peter. It's working. It's really working. It's just a matter of time now before I have Stephen Moore's back with me for good. so that I can tell them exactly how I want everything for the wedding. I'm sure we can arrange the whole thing. Thanks, Dad. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question you? Sure. What if it rains? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It won't rain. Just like that, that's it. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> Next few days are going to be mind-boggling. <laughs> Leslie, look, if there's anything I can do to help you, just ask, okay? Thank you, I will. Laura, may I ask another question? I, I don't suppose that you would, by any chance, consider postponing the wedding for a week. No. Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time that we uh, told Laura and Scotty exactly what we had in mind for their wedding gift. Parents oh. unite. Come on. Oh. Ladies, I think it's your position Please. to tell them. Don't be silly. No. Everybody no. It was your no. idea originally. That doesn't you matter. Know, everybody no, 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 no. Please, well, ladies, you it's your idea. You do it. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. But this is a gift from everybody, from all of the parents, so you have to understand that. Okay. We felt that maybe you would enjoy having a real honeymoon instead of just a couple of days at the lodge. Oh? So, uh, we thought, well, perhaps you would like to go to uh, Los Angeles for a week or so. What? 
Yes, and, and we figured we could probably, um, we could make a reservation for you in one of the prettier hotels there with a swimming pool. <laughs> and then we could arrange for tours around the city and for tickets to anything you might want to see in Hollywood or Los Angeles or Beverly Hills. And then maybe, oh, say a few days at Malibu or one of the other pretty beaches there before you had to fly back here first class, of course. What do you think? I don't believe it.